Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Gear VR. I'm going to speak directly to the fact that we haven't been able to do screen recording or screen capturing uh, on our Gear VR while using it. We've always had to basically just kind of tell people how the experience is of using this. Well, we now have an option to be able to do screen recording as well as screenshot taking directly within the system. I'm going to walk you through how to use these new features within the Gear VR. This is TK. Let's check it out. Without the requirements right out of the box, of course you have to have a Gear VR, you have to have a capable device that's able to run with it. I'm using it with the Galaxy S7 Edge. Uh, the other thing I want to make sure you guys have is the latest version of the Oculus application as well as all updates have been applied. Now today is May 24th, 2016, so any updates up to this point, as long as you have them installed on your system, you should be able to get into this and actually use it. Now here is some of the limitations of what you can and cannot do. Currently in the current setup, it doesn't do audio, it only does video, but the that's not a big problem because most of the time when you're doing gameplay or if let's say you're doing screen capturing, you're going to overlay it similar to the way I'm doing it for you right now. Um, you get to see what the experience is inside. You can actually move your head and see how it works. Now, as far as mechanics and how to get it set up, um, of course, first thing we're going to do, open up your Gear VR and get your device. Now, if you have a case on your device, take, make sure you take it off as it's not going to work. So take off the case and unlock the device. Once you have your device in the actual uh, Gear VR, there is a back button here. So this is the interface that gets us into the setup or the settings options that we get within the Gear VR. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the actual unit itself. I'm gonna just put it on and use it and just kind of explain to you the process. And then I'm gonna overlay the video as I get there. Uh, the, there's two options. There's screen capturing, which essentially is video recording. And then unfortunately it's limited to a four by three aspect ratio. So you may be looking at this and saying, oh my God, why is it like this? It's a four by three aspect ratio. You can set it up within your editor to go to 16 by nine, but it's the native and I'm gonna keep it in the native format. Um, and as far as screen capturing, it has basically kind of like a five second delay where it just shows up. And at entirety of the process, whenever you're using it, there is a red dot on the top right of your screen. And if you see the red dot, that means it's recording. Um, unfortunately, this is again, part of the limitations. Uh, when you're in it, you don't have the ability of using it within certain applications. Not some you can and some you can't. And if it's supported by the developer, it will allow you. So I'll go ahead and go into the system itself. We'll mount it on. Tap the touchpad to turn it on. Adjust the focal space. We'll give it a second. So once you're in the unit itself, and I'm gonna show you guys, so this is me at the main, uh, main menu. I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold my back button. It does a little circle and it takes me into the settings tab. Um, and that's where I, I'm able to access my profile. Now the new area here, I'm gonna try to see if I can find a screenshot of something similar to this, but the new options now on the middle section shows you your profile card. You have the offline status, the time of the day. Um, on the left, you have the ability of going home, your profile, and then you have your friends if you have some friends added there. You show the battery percentage on the top as well as the Bluetooth signal and Wi-Fi and uh, radio signal. You have the ability of turning off notification, you have settings, and then you also have utilities. Um, under settings, you have the ability of setting brightness, uh, turning on, turning off Wi-Fi, be able to do, go to the pass-through camera. Now the pass-through camera, and I think you guys probably see it, uh, it basically turns on the camera here. It, once it, this turns it on, I'm able to see you guys through the actual unit itself, and it's very, very minimalistic. There's no delay, it works very, very well. It looks weird from your point of view, but from my point of view, it's really cool because I get to see through. Um, and of course, and you can tap, there's a center button here, you tap it once, it takes me out and then I'm able to go back home. The one thing I wanted you guys to go in, in the settings on the right side, there's like a little screwdriver and a wrench which says utilities. Under that, there's two options now. We have screenshot and screen capture. I'm gonna turn on screen capture or capture video. At this point, you and I are looking at the same video itself. In my view, there's a red dot on the top right of the screen. I'm not sure if you guys could see this. Uh, I'm able to see the menu. I'm able to show you guys where I am. Uh, you can see that there's options, obviously home here. I have my library, I can tap it once. And then you can see all the applications that I have installed. I can scroll down, go through them. Uh, not all of these applications support the screen recording. And the one thing you wanna be aware of, if you start interacting with any of these, screen recording will stop. You have to reinitiate screen recording within the application itself. Uh, I'm gonna go back up once. I'm gonna take you guys to the store. 
And I just want to show you guys that I'm able to jump between different menus and the recording stays and it works very well. And of course, you're able to swipe through. These are all the different options that you have, applications. There's just so much. You can see at the bottom of the screen here how many pages there is of applications and things you can do within the Gear VR ecosystem. Of course, we can go straight to Samsung only or Samsung uh, applications. You have Milk, Jaunt, I think is it Jaunt VR? Um, and then you have other applications here. A little bit smaller of a collection, but the one thing I wanted to show you guys and we're going to jump into is the Samsung Internet Browser. So I'm going to try to interact with it right now. Overall, as far as my experience is, the video is going to stop. I'm going to restart it when I get in. So now I'm in the actual browser. The browser interface has been updated. You can see here, it looks like I'm sitting in an entire hall um, by myself. I have the screen in front of me. I have some bookmarks, some quick access, mostly video history. You can see here, you can interact. Um, you can see some of the recent things that I've opened. You can go here, VR trailers. These are some shortcuts within the browser. And the good thing about this browser is that you have the ability of basically launching some of the desktop applications that you normally have, like setting up gaze settings, open source licensing, default, or even requesting desktop version of an application. Now I'm in my gallery. This is uh, basically a virtual version of my gallery itself. I can go into, let's say, the Instagram folder. It populates the pictures of everything that I have in here. I'm able to select these pictures, and then you can see that they're in full screen. This entire time, I have a red dot on the top part of my screen. Overall, and then you, of course, swipe. You can see the different things. There's the G5, different things, and then you can swipe through. Very, very nice, very easy, very simple. So setting it up and using is pretty easy. Just make sure you're updated to the last, the latest version of the application itself, as far as the Oculus application. And then go into the settings tab, you'll see the option under, there's basically on the right side of your screen, there's a, a screwdriver and a gear. Once you click that, it gives you two options, screen capture or screen record. And screen record works pretty well. Unfortunately, it's limited to four by three, but I think it's intended to be that way. Um, it works great also for if you're watching the video in, you know, depending on the orientation, but it actually looks pretty much great both ways. Um, I want to keep in mind uh, there is no audio. For some reason or another, it doesn't record audio at all. I've tried using other applications again. I've hoped maybe that now that this one works, maybe others will be. It doesn't work, unfortunately. Something to do with when the system is booting up, it shuts every other service running in the background for it to start and take over the device. It's almost like an entire different launcher or system launches to be able to run. So hopefully we'll have more functionalities and more support now that we have some functionalities to be able to record. Um, and hopefully this was very useful for you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Are you using your GVR? Are you enjoying it? I like it. I play with it. Uh, I try to keep uh, in touch with some of the new applications. Some of the apps are expensive, but uh, some of them are well worth it. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support and I will see you guys in the next one. This is the LG G5. It's here. I finally have it from T-Mobile. I did a pre-order and a front-facing camera. Fingerprint sensor is at the bottom. And again, this isn't a button. It's actually